A Washington police chief, Kathy Lanier, had this to say when asked about Adam Kokesh's planned 4th of July march into Washington with loaded rifles. First of all, I want to clear up, uh, there's a difference between civil disobedience, which I think is this is being portrayed as a civil disobedience, and actually violation of the law. I mean, there's two different things here. So civil disobedience, people come to Washington, D.C. to, to protest um, policies and government policy uh, all the time. It's no problem. But when you cross into the District of Columbia with firearms and you're not in compliance with the law, now you're talking about a criminal offense and there's, you know, there's going to be some action by police. So Chief Lanier wants to make some kind of a distinction between civil disobedience and violating the law. So here again is her definition of civil disobedience. Civil disobedience, people come to Washington, D.C. to, to protest um, policies and government policy uh, all the time. It's no problem. Note that Chief Lanier characterizes peaceful assembly in order to petition the government as civil disobedience. But what law does a demonstration break? When someone exercises their right to protest, specifically recognized by the First Amendment, how is that disobedience in any way? Since the D.C. police chief hasn't read the Constitution that she swore to uphold when she took office, let's remind her what it says. The right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Chief Lanier. Going to Washington and protesting government policy is not civil disobedience. It's an exercise of a constitutionally guaranteed right. Civil doesn't mean polite. It means government. And as we all know from experience, government is not always civil. Disobedience means to actively and publicly disobey laws that are unjust. It is violating the law. Martin Luther King had this to say about violating a court order against him marching. Uh, that I do feel that there are two types of laws. One is a just law and one is an unjust law. I think we all have moral obligations to obey just laws. On the other hand, I think we have moral obligations to disobey unjust laws because non-cooperation with evil is as much a moral obligation as is cooperation with good. Civil disobedience always involves violating a law. That's where the disobedience part comes in. So Kathy Lanier's distinction between civil disobedience and violating the law is nonsense. But what is the law that Adam Kokesh and his marchers would be disobeying or violating? The very law that was struck down by the Supreme Court in 2008 in D.C. versus Heller. Now it's interesting to note that Dick Heller, the plaintiff in the case, was actually a D.C. cop who was suing for his right to carry a gun off duty. Of course, the real precedent for it being an individual right is the Second Amendment itself. Both the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that D.C.'s gun laws violate the Constitution. Washington, D.C.'s Firearms Control Regulation Act of 1975 specifically outlawed handguns and requires all firearms, including rifles and shotguns, to be kept, quote, unloaded and disassembled or bound by a trigger lock. That is why I imagine Adam Kokesh and the DC marchers are going to be marching with loaded rifles to illustrate the fact that Police Chief Lanier and the District of Columbia have thumbed their noses at the Constitution and the Supreme Court decision of five years ago. So Police Chief Lanier, there is no difference between civil disobedience and violating the law. But since you maintain there's a distinction, I would ask you, is your refusal to obey a Supreme Court ruling of five years ago that was made specifically about your gun laws and your refusal to obey the Constitution that you swore to uphold, is that civil disobedience or is that violating the law? For InfoWars, I'm David Knight. And win, lose, or draw, I definitely... Uh Admire Adam for going through with this. You know, you have to judge for yourself whether this is going to be right for you or not. I believe Alex is going to go. I don't know if he's going to be armed or not, but Adam will be armed and definitely interested in seeing uh, what happens here. It's definitely going to be history, history making, if nothing else. So let's go on to our last article of the night. Man arrested for allegedly shooting a realistic toy gun with kids in Queens Park. Let's just, let's just roll the footage there. Jack Pawlowski was led out of his Queens home in handcuffs in front of his stunned-looking wife and three young kids. He said nothing as detectives put him in their car. 
I don't tend to take things lying down. I confronted him. I don't care if that firearm is plastic. That's absolutely unacceptable. He told us he took one of these toy guns and two of his kids around the corner to Ditmars Park. The 54-year-old Pawlowski is charged with reckless endangerment, endangering the welfare of a minor, resisting arrest, and possession of an illegal BB gun. Completely ridiculous. If we can go to that full screen so people can see the quotes that some of these people had to say, if we can scroll through a little bit. I want to read this one. Yes, right there. I mean, he's brandishing a firearm, and I don't care if that firearm is plastic. It's unacceptable. That from a self-appointed busybody in snitch, a woman out there, hey, I don't care if you're playing with toys or BB guns. It's so out there, and I'm offended. And also, you saw the city councilman in that clip who had something to say, said you cannot run around with a realistic-looking gun. And I can tell you from personal experience, anytime a... Uh, Anytime a city councilman and a self-appointed snitch like that get together, somebody gets screwed. Myself and David Knight witnessed that when we went to the Moms Demand Action Rally. So that brings us to the end of this segment. But stay tuned because after the segment, we have two additional interviews, one with Ian DeSantis. He uh, almost had his guns taken by the police. They tried to seize his guns after a mental health evaluation, even though there's nothing wrong with the guy. We'll talk to him, see what he has to say. And also Cody Wilson, who I alluded to earlier, is going to be joining us talking about the printable gun revolution. But for right now, let's go to our quote of the day. This from Frank Church. In examining the CIA's past and present use of the U.S. media, the committee finds two reasons for concern. The first is the potential inherent in covert media operations for manipulating or incidentally misleading the American public. And that from Frank Church. So if you want to support this broadcast, you want to see it continue, go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. There's a lot of great stuff there. The Alex Jones Show, the Nightly News, the Rants, all the good stuff is waiting right there for you. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds?